Welcome back. In this step, we are going to get some grass in this level. We're going to learn all about the foliage tool and how to use it. And we're going to distribute some dead looking grass in order to do that. Before we can do that, though, we need to go back to fab and download that grass. So let's get that done first. So let's open the fab plugin again. There it is. And this time I'm going to search for dry grass. And you could put the uh, filter on to show by free, but it's already there. So there it is, dry grass from Quixel. And this time I'm going to change the quality down to low because I don't want this taking up too much VRAM or whatever. So we're going to just have that on low and then add to project. And this will download everything we need. And you can see we've got lots of stuff. But I'm just going to close that and close the Fabric plugin for now. And then we'll have a look at it in here. So let's go back to Mega Scans. We've now got another folder called Plants. So let's have a look in there. We're going to ignore this global foliage actor. That's not really something we need to concern ourselves with. But we do want to go into the dry grass folder. There's low. And then we've got the materials. And there's two different materials there. One is for when it's up close and you actually get a mesh. And one is for when it's further away and you get what's called a billboard. And I'll try and show you that on one of the meshes. We'll do this one. So if I just go in on this and move around it, this is actually a mesh. So you can see it's got detail to it. However, if I change the LOD, so we're currently looking at auto, but if I say let's look at LOD zero, we then get this one, which is a billboard, and it's just a flat image that always faces us. And that means that you get a lot more performance. Now, we don't really have to do anything about that. It's just something to be aware of. So we'll go back to LOD Auto. You can see when we're up close, we get that one. And as we go further out, you can see that there's a transition distance happening there. And we may well have to come in and change this. But at the moment, we just need to know that it exists. Right. So I can close that for now. I'm just going to save everything now that I've imported it. So let's do save all. And oh, there's a lot of things I haven't saved yet. So let's make sure I save everything. Lovely. And now we are going to set up the foliage tool. So I'm just going to minimize that for a minute. And then we've been in selection mode. We've been in landscape mode. We're now going to go to foliage mode. So let's go into there. And it's saying drop your foliage here. So we can't do anything until we put the foliage in there. And I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five. All five of these meshes and the foliage tool will just paint all of them at once. It's very good. So we're going to drag and drop those into here. Now, what I want is to make sure that as I mouse over them, there's a little blue tick or check mark in each of those, which means that they will be painted with. But I also want a blue outline around them all as well. That means when we change the settings, it will change it for that instance. So I'm just going to hold shift and click on the others and make sure they've all got that blue outline so that we can make some changes. I'm then also just going to find an area that I can paint so that I can see that I like my settings or not as I change them. So I'm just going to click once. So you can see this is my brush here. If I click once, that's going to show me how much grass I get. And it will look a little bit strange at first. That's because it will just need to compile the shader. There you go. And that's kind of how it looks. Now, I don't think that's dense enough for me. I would like the grass to be more dense than that. Although it's not bad. So I'm just going to hit Control and Z to get rid of that. And we'll make some changes. So I'm going to change the density to be 120. And that's per um, 1000 by 1000 unit area. So it's just how many grass instances it'll put down in any given area. I also want to change the scale. Now, at the moment, every grass instance will be exactly the same size. But we can add some randomness into this by saying that they can be from 0 0.5, so half the original size, up to 1.5. So one and a half times and any size in between those is now something it will do when we click. Another thing we want to do is make sure that grass has no collisions on it. We don't want our players getting stuck on grass. That would feel weird and it should be off by default. But let's check. So I've just scrolled down in my settings, found collision presets and it says no collision. Perfect. We don't want that. Another thing we need to check is that it isn't casting any shadows because there's going to be potentially tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of these on screen at once. If they're all casting a shadow, that's going to bring the engine to an absolute halt. We're going to like the frame rate is going to be terrible in the single digits. So we're going to turn off cast shadow for the grass. And then what we need to do is just paint that around the level. So 
as I showed you earlier, you can use your square brackets to resize your brush. So I'm going to have it about that size. And I'm just going to click in areas where I want the grass. And I'm going to try and use it quite sparingly for a couple of reasons. One, the more grass you put in, oh, you see now what I've done there is a mistake. I'll come back to that in a sec. Uh, the more grass you put in, the more it'll slow the engine down. But also, this is supposed to be like a dry area. Well, that's how I'm picturing it. So I don't want there to be too much grass. I think it'll look odd. So in some areas, I'm just clicking once or twice. In other areas, I may be doing a little bit of a click and drag. But it's just a case of getting some grass down. Again, I don't want to overdo this. Like that. There we go. And I'm just trying to get it to go in clumps. And it might be quite hard to see on my screen. I'm quite sort of experienced with this. So I know that it is putting it where I'm clicking it. I don't necessarily need to see it. Because again, it doesn't really matter what it looks like from up here. It matters what it looks like to the player. So I just need to know that I've put in enough really. And I'm also going to pop some up here where the player starts. And that's just going to tie everything together, hopefully. Perfect. Right, that should do it. Let's just have a little run around and see if we like the look of it. So I think this looks okay. Let's jump down here. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. Not too much but enough that it makes the level look more interesting, which is what I was going for. Okay, there are a few things that I want to change though before I move on, because there are a couple of things visually with the grass that I'm not very happy about. So the first thing, and this may or may not be happening for you, but I find that when I look at the grass here, I get these kind of shimmering shadows. Let me just turn the foliage tool off for a second so I can mouse. These sort of ugly ass shadows that I don't like at all. And it's actually to do with the global illumination. At the moment, just to keep things running smoothly, I've got my scalability set to medium, which you can get to if you've not done this already. If you go to settings, engine scalability settings, and low or medium is often quite good, just to make sure things run smoothly while you're working on it. However, for the global illumination, that doesn't look good. So if we move that up to high, you see those shadows now stop messing around. They just look better. So I'm going to leave that there. We've also got, I think, the LOD transitions happening too close. So if I move backwards and forwards here, you can see these ones here look very different to these ones here. And it's just that it's happening too close to the player and doesn't look good. So what we're going to do is change the LOD transition so that that happens further away. It will still be noticeable, but it will be less noticeable. So we'll make that change on the grass now. So here's how we do it. We just open one of these at a time. So we'll open this one. And what we need to do is where it says LOD picker, we're going to change it to LOD2. That's this 2D one. And where it says screen size, this is when it will change. So when the screen size is 0.1, it'll change. However, I want that to happen further away. So I'm going to change it to 0.02. And then I'm going to save that. And now if I just go back to LOD auto here, you see that I'm having to go quite far out and I can see when it changes here because it's telling me the triangle count. So it's currently on 458 and as I get all the way back here, that's where the transition's happening. So quite far out, which is what I want. So that one was 0.2. So I'll save that. And then I'm going to open the next one and just repeat the process. But I'm going to change the number so that they don't all change at the same distance. So this one I'm going to change to LOD2. And I'm going to set the screen size of this one to 0.018. And that will just add some variations. So I'll save that one. Then we're going to do this one. And we'll change this one to 0.016. Again, just so it's different. Save that. And then we've got two more left to do. So again, change it to LOD2. The transition for this one's going to be 0 0.014. Save. And then one more to do. 
back to LOD zero, and this one's going to be 0 0.012. So they've all now got slightly different screen sizes before they change. And you can now see that that transition is happening over here, but it's much harder to see when that happens, and it just gives a much better look. So as the player's now running through the level, just looks better, which is all we can ask for. The grass now looks real nice. Perfect. And that will do it for the grass. In the next step, we're going to use the foliage tool again, but in a slightly different way, we're going to introduce some bushes and some trees that will need slightly different settings as we put them in there. Uh, so hopefully you'll be excited for that, and I'll see you in the next step. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you'd like to help me create more content like this, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. The contributions I get through Patreon make a huge difference in keeping this channel going. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to make sure you don't miss my upcoming tutorials. Your support and engagement mean the world to me and help my channel continue to grow. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.